Hi, and welcome back to the Galt's Vaults. Uh, I'm your host, Kevin McLean, at the Galt Museum and Archives in Lethbridge, Alberta. In the last segment, we were talking about how the collection at the Galt Museum and Archives began uh, back in 1964, and how most of the material culture that's here today is the result of what we call uh, passive donations or passive offers. And that's where people voluntarily, on their own initiative, decide to uh, give us uh, treasures that are in their homes. In this case today, I want to talk to you about one of those passive offers that was received back in uh, 2016, and it's a combination offer of two objects, and that is a chess set, which you can see here to my right, as well as this wonderful um, painting. The chess set's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, we don't know, in fact, who made it, uh, but what we, we do know is about its past ownership, which I'm gonna uh, talk to you about. Um, with respect to the painting, though, you can see that it is a winter landscape scene. Um, it is set in a, in a place which is the uh, uh, Nakoda Stony uh, Reservation, which is west of uh, Calgary, Alberta. And what it depicts is a temporary tent scene um, where from approximately what, May of 1942 to November of 1942, uh, German prisoners of war during the Second World War were housed at this temporary location. It was during this time that there were two camps further down in southern Alberta that were under construction. Uh, one was here in Lethbridge, Alberta, that was Camp 133, and there was a second camp in Medicine Hat that was under construction, and that was uh, Camp 132. Um, the work itself has no title on it. Uh, as well, there is no artist's name put on it, but there is a, a statement that is uh, pasted to the back of the painting, and so I'm going to read that to you. And it says, Prisoner of War Camp, Osada, Alberta, painted by Willy Mueller, a German inmate of the above camp, who, after being transferred to a more permanent quarters at Medicine Hat, became involved in the killing of a fellow prisoner. Following his conviction for murder, and prior to his execution at the Lethbridge Jail on December 18, 1946, Mueller made a personal gift of this painting to Sergeant D. G. Ashby, then in charge of the RCMP police at Medicine Hat, Alberta. And D. G. Ashby is Denzel Ashby, who is a sergeant at the detachment in Medicine Hat. So we're particularly excited about these uh, two objects. Um, reason number one is because it is a really great example of something that I call uh, send it home. So people might think that museums are interested in the stuff, in stuff for the sake of stuff, specifically old stuff for the sake of stuff, if that was the case, however, we would spend every minute of our working day haunting and skulking around antique stores uh, and thrift stores just solely looking for old stuff. But that's not the case at all. As we said in the last segment, what's important to us is objects, specific connections to specific individuals, and those specific individuals and the objects connections to place. And in the case of the Galt Museum and Archives, that place happens to be Lethbridge in southwestern Alberta. So it's the connections, it's the meanings, it's the story, it's the context that informs us about who we are and where we live. So what we're so grateful for in this case is that these objects were actually um, resident in Singapore in advance of their being donated uh, to us. Um, in order to do these objects justice and the memory of the people that they're connected to, it is best that they're sent home and so they're sent, they were actually brought here to Lethbridge uh, by their donors, which was uh, Wendy Russell and, uh, and Hillary White. So we're extremely grateful that they recognized how important that is because often people just think because museums have old stuff that they want all old stuff and that's not the case. Reason number two that we're so excited is that these objects are of national cultural significance. Um, they're not of national cultural significance solely due to their connection to the Canadian government's uh, POW camp system across the country. Uh, we have other objects that came from Camp 133 and they may not be of, of, of great of interest as these objects. These objects are of national significance because they are related to one of the few murders that happened in the camp system during the Second World War. And importantly for us here in Lethbridge, Alberta, they are uh, then part of what is known today as the second largest um, execution that has happened in Canadian uh, history. And so for that reason, institutions in Calgary, Edmonton, Ottawa, uh, 
and elsewhere would love to have this stuff. But it was offered to us, and so we should, as citizens and res residents of Lethbridge and Southwest Alberta, take great pride in the fact that the donors saw fit to deposit these objects here because they were confident in the level of care that we could provide. So finally, uh, before I leave you, what I do want to do is introduce these objects donors. So again, uh, that was Wendy Russell, who is the daughter of Denzel Ashby, who was the sergeant in charge of the RCMP detachment, as well as Denzel's granddaughter, um, who is Hillary White, whose mom is Rosemary Wells, who is the sister of uh, Wendy Russell. My father was the sergeant in charge of the RCMP detachment in Medicine Hat. So I don't know any of the legal happenings at all. I've been, you know, a small child. I was just aware that Willie he was there. But he was, he was a very, very pleasant young man. I can recall his nice countenance. He had a very friendly face, but he was became very close to our family. He used to cut the grass. I can remember sitting on the basement steps and listening to him play his harmonica. Willie uh, gave my parents certain gifts. My mother thought he was lovely. Yeah. He was such a gentleman. I think that's his manners were lovely. And that Rosemary was very fond of him. She was a teenager. And he was a nice looking young man. And I think she sort of had a, a crush on him, and he was very gentle, and as I say, very respectful. My mother telling me about Willie, and even up until her later age, her eyes would well up and start. she started to cry when she spoke mm -hmm. about him. She told me lots of stories, some romance or something she has with this guy, and um, I, I just remember her telling me that he, was, he died on her birthday and it was devastating. My father mentioned that they were provided with chess sets, and that Willie had this set with him, and when he was taken away, he presented these to uh, my father. So these things obviously meant something to your dad. He felt some burden of them being a gift from someone who was executed mm -hmm. and that he felt he should be a steward of them. He, he actively valued them. Oh, very definitely. I have a feeling he thought at the time that Willie should never have been hanged. And I think that weighed on him, but this is my feelings. Dad, I think, felt that badly about this. Um, that chest set. Um, that was just in his display case, and this was always on his wall. So our POW collection, these are two among 90 other objects that we have here. Uh, you can access those objects yourselves via the comfort of your own home by going online and looking for what is our research link. You'll see their, their images, their photos, and you will also see the stories that are related to the specific objects themselves, which includes uh, these objects here. With that, uh, thank you for listening in to the Galt's Vaults with Kevin McLean, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll talk to you again soon. Be well.